All right, guys, what's going on? This is War 10 of Season 42. And as you can see, we matched XK9. And as you can also see here, it says that in Season 41, they finished in Stone 3. Um, that's not true, though. Um, these guys shell. They bounce back and forth between two alliances. The alliance that they're not using for the season, they put, like, alt accounts in. And just purposely lose wars to lower their war rating. So that the alliance is ready, like the the shell of the alliance is ready for all of them to join the following season and they can just beat up on, you know, Platinum 1 and Platinum 2 alliances for the first half to three quarters of the season. Um, which I think is, you know, just really rude. There are a lot of alliances who, you know, maybe their, their cap would be platinum one or maybe they're trying to reach platinum one for the first time they match these guys and you know their rosters are twice the size and um yeah i mean they're just you know gonna they are literally just ruining other people's seasons because they don't feel like playing fairly and it's a shame because these guys are actually really good um we've matched them before i think that they're out of the loop with like the current meta in tier one right now probably because they haven't been playing in tier one but um the the meta right now is mystic heavy defense with science bands and they are doing like what's probably the meta in lower tiers which is just you know banning ghost and a couple of tech champions so either way um you know definitely not a fan of these guys we wanted to win and this war is going to get really interesting we cleared our first like 140 fights with two deaths and then we had a bit of an incident and we thought we were gonna lose they hadn't really started clearing yet but um we thought we were gonna lose and you guys will kind of see what happens at the end here but um yeah it was really close for a really long time so um moving up here that first fight was just a jabari panther i've obviously been taking that all season um, this is going to be a Dragon Man. I took him here last war with Red Magneto um, and no knockdowns. And it took forever. Omega Sentinel is... Um, she has much higher damage like on her basic attacks. And she's also going to be power burning on every single hit. Um, so it kind of like if this person's running 5 out of 5 Mystic Dispersion... Um, her power burn kind of turns it into like maybe three out of five so it's actually really helpful um, and yeah I mean he's gonna go down it's been what like 40 seconds now he's pretty close to being done and yeah her damage is just so high she's such a good champion so yeah, not a ton to say about this fight. I've taken it several times before. I don't like this fight. Like, I don't like taking it. Um, I mean, he's just... I just don't think he's a good placement here. Um, there are places where you can place... Where you can put him where he is a little bit more dangerous. But um, only with the right bands. And only on the right nodes. So, I'm going to move up here. I'm going to be taking node 24. This is Buffet over time and Vigorous Assault. And I'm going to be taking this fight with Omega Sentinel. I thought about taking it with Omega Red and just removing Dexterity. But I decided not to because Omega Sentinel is um, immune to Nullify. And she's also a tactic attacker. So she's going to be removing all of the prowess. Um, but this Mantis AI is just not going to be nice. So here I, ax I made the mistake of finishing a five hit combo against her when she had a bar of power and so she used a special one you really don't want mantis throwing a special one but here she's going to throw another one while i was blocking and you can see right here as the encroaching sleep timer is finishing up i am going to throw a special attack that way i don't get stunned and this is the reason that i use tech power back boosts um it was specifically to make sure that, you know, if I had to start throwing specials, I had power to throw them. I wouldn't have been able to get back up to my special one for the second encroaching sleep timer if I hadn't had on the tech boost. So right here, she's going to throw a heavy. I'm late to react, so I get heavied. 
um, which is kind of annoying. It's going to cost me some potions. I got really lucky that it didn't crit uh, because she gets a fury. Mantis gets a fury every time she charges a heavy attack and yeah, she definitely could have hurt me there. But um, next fight here is going to be a white magneto. I'm going to use the heal block pre-fight here because this node basically does nothing if one of two things if, if one of two things happens if you either don't dash back two times in a row um, he's not going to regenerate or if he has a heal block on him so i'm going to try to do like a little bit of both but the heal block turns the node off completely if you don't have access to a heal block champion the only thing you need to do is um just not dash back a bunch but um yeah, you can see there, he actually just threw a special one like directly into my block, which was super annoying. Um, the AI's been doing that a bunch lately. It, I don't know, I don't, I don't love it, but it um, doesn't really matter here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove Dexterity. And I'm gonna take this Killmonger on Buffet with Omega Red. Very, very easy fight. Use some energy refills, of course, because energy refills are che cheaper than boosts. And you're going to see this fight's going to be about 30 seconds. So uh, just go ahead and trigger the reverberation early on in the fight when he has no power. That way you're not taking damage back. Lock in a few spores. I don't lock in very many here, but it's a path fight and it's a rank 5 omega red. I don't need a ton of spores. <laughs> um... Yeah, so here he's going to throw his special one. I like to push him to a special two, but it's not a big deal. And he's just going to go down. So very, very easy fight, very fast. And then I'm going to be taking all of the left side mini bosses. So my first fight here is going to be Kingpin. This is a rank five Kingpin. I took a rank four here two wars ago against New Nation. And I commented then that it's good placement and that you want to power start one here instead of using an invulnerability boost. One thing I messed up here, I didn't turn dexterity back on from my Killmonger fight. And I'm going to realize that here in a second, um, like after this fight's over. And I'm just going to do something really dumb. So there, um, I, did, I wasn't able to lock in spores, but I just heavied him so I wouldn't get faltered. And then he had the falter on him and no vigilance, so I decided to throw my heavy into his unstoppable just to lock in spores. And you can see here that he's at two bars of power, but since I used the power start one, I'm going to beat him to my special three. So I'm going to heavy him, I'm going to throw my special three, and this will pretty much heal me back up to full. If I didn't use the power start one and I had used an invuln and crit like one more time, I would have been at two bars of power, he would have been at three bars of power, and um, yeah, he would have stunned me on his special three, which is not what you want to have happen, and then he would have been at a bar and a half of power still because of power reserve, he probably would have thrown his special one, degened me, so I mean, it's good placement for him, um, and then right there, so I went in, to remove dexterity, realized it was already off, put the point back in, and then had to take it off again. So I just wasted so much time that I had to use a second power start one boost for this long shot fight. I used the power start one for both of these fights for the same reason, just to race to the special three. And this fight's actually gonna go pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock in spores here. Um, I've said it before, but the first hit of my heavy is going to uh, feed Conflictor. The second hit is going to lock in Degen. So I'm playing it really well, but here in a second, right there I get hit, which wastes a little bit of time, so I lose some spores. And then right there, I hesitated for like a split second to do my medium and then heavy, and I ate a special one. So. Not the end of the world, but it is pretty annoying. Here, I'm going to go ahead and throw my special three. This should finish the fight. And then I'm going to go back in and mess with my masteries again. And I'm going to turn dexterity back on. So 
the reason I'm gonna be turning dexterity back on, I mentioned it in my last war video, but just in case, you know, you haven't seen it, the the strategy for this fight with Omega Red versus Mangog. So first of all, Spidey 2099 is obviously the best option here. Um, but we could only fit one, and that person didn't have anti-venom on his team. It's still doable, it's just a little bit sketchy. And, you know, this fight's a little sketchy too, but I would rather put myself in a sketchy fight than somebody else. So, um, the strategy for this fight is to play very, very, very slowly until he's at, like, two bars of power. So I just want to be super slow here, get a reparry, lock in my spores a second time, so now he's at two bars, so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to dex a heavy and then punish it. And so the fact that this person placed with Mystic Dispersion is something that you can use against them. Um, because it pretty much guarantees that if Mangog gets to two bars of power, you're going to be able to push him to a special three. So he's not going to be sitting there with like an unblockable special two ready to hit you. Um, you know, you can just get him you can just get him right to his special three. So here, uh, you know, he actually goes down really fast. I only had to eat one. That was a, that was probably the best that fight has ever gone for me. It was really, really easy. Um, and then I'm actually not going to be taking the Korg boss. Um, Heck took the Korg boss with Diablo with the Kingpin synergy for the passive poisons. And he absolutely smoked it. Um, so yeah, either way, um, so like I said, we, so we did end up winning this war. We won five to nine. We were 140 fights in with only two deaths and they had died three times. And then we had a little bit of a mishap on one fight and gave up three attack bonuses to it. And so then we were convinced that we had lost, but then they died a bunch more. So... I think it just kind of comes with the territory. I don't think that they would have, they never die that much. And our defense isn't like anything crazy. So I really, really think that the reason they died so many times is because of the meta shift between like plat one, plat two and masters. So I kind of touched on it before, but basically in lower tiers right now, people are like banning really good tech champions or like armor burn champions or champions that can deal with, you know, the prowess and the power gain and all of that stuff. But in tier one, what a lot of alliances are doing is they're kind of like punting the global because it's so weak right now. They're, they're opting not to ban armor burn champions. And instead they're banning uh, Spidey 2099 uh, Scorpion, so like the best two science attackers, and then like a nuke option. So you guys have seen people ban like Corvus against us, they've banned Ghost against us, they've banned Tigra against us. So just like, you know, a couple of really strong, like, like two science attacker bans, and then like a really strong, like fast attacker ban. And then just loading up defense with Mystic uh, Defenders. That's kind of what everyone's been doing. And I just don't think that they got the memo since they haven't been playing. Um, you know, they, they've been punching down a little bit. So either way, um, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.